Hello, okay, here we are again for lots more maths. You should be watching this after the gradient video gradient video number four, or it may have been renumbered gradient 4a, and this is 4b now. So you should know how to do this question. Finding the gradient of the line that goes through minus 2, 3 and 8, 3. Stop the video now and see if you can answer that question in your notebook. OK, let's see if you answered this correctly. Like last time, you should have listed the variables here and also written the formula. m equals y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And you should have listed the variables. Here, I'm going to decide for x1, I'm going to use minus 2. That means I have to use 3 for y1. x2, I'm going to use 8. And y2, I'm using 3. Notice I'm using Peter and Paul to help me to make sure I put things in the right place. Now we need to fill in the formula. y2 is 3. A minus sign is a minus sign. y1 is 3. x2 is 8. Minus sign is a minus sign. x1 is negative 2. I've just put that in brackets so it's easy to see that there are two negative signs. 3 minus 3, easy peasy, 0. 8 minus minus 2, the two minuses become a plus. So this is really 8 plus 2, which is 10. Now this is an excellent example of what happens to my students at Christmas time when they ask me if I will give them a present. I bring absolutely nothing, I share it equally between the 10 of them, and how much do they all get together? Stop the video and have a think. Yes, that's right, I give them absolutely zero. Because I love my students equally, so they all get the same present. Now, you probably realised that and did this numerically correct in the exercise. But we've done this algebraically. What would it have looked like if I'd drawn a graph or done a picture? Well, let's plot the points. Minus 2, 3. So let's pretend that is minus 2. And let's pretend that here is 3 on the y-axis. So I've got a point here. 8, 3. Let's pretend this is 8 and 3, so we have this here. Now, if I join these up, I'm obviously going to get a straight line, because that's what we're studying. Uh, you probably would use a ruler. You should be using a ruler. I, of course, am a professional. I don't need a ruler. So that is a little bit wobbly there. Now, the name of this line is actually y equals 3. Why would we call it that? Well, what is the y-coordinate here? 3. What's the y-coordinate here? 3. And here? 3. And here? 3. And here? 3. Are we spotting a pattern? Yes, it is always 3. That's why we call the line y equals 3. Make sure you copy this into your notebook now as an example. Notice example 2. Following on from the example from the previous video. Stop it now, copy it down now. Okay, I've also got another example here. See if you can do this question. Finding the gradient of the line that goes through minus 5, 4 and minus 5, 1. Stop the video and see if you can do this question in your notebook correctly. Okay, you should have had an answer. Let's see if your answer matches mine. So again, I have the variables listed, I have the formula written. So x1 minus 5, I've got Peter and Paul helping me out again. This has to be 4, this one has to be x2, this one has to be 1. I now fill the numbers into the formula. y2 is 1, minus sign is a minus sign, y1 is 4 x2 is minus 5, minus sign is a minus sign, x1 is minus 5. 
So this is going to be 1 minus 4, easy peasy, minus 3. Here I have minus 5, minus minus makes a plus, is 5. Still minus 3 on the top, numerator. Denominator though, minus 5 plus 5 is what number? What do you think it is? Okay, let's check. It's 0. Now what do we do at this point? Well, you should know that you can't divide anything by 0. So if there's no number that exists, this is our old friend, the undefined line. Do you remember it? Now, you may feel a little bit confused. So let's draw a graph to make it a little bit clearer. Minus 5, 4. Let's pretend that's minus 5. Let's pretend that is 4 on the x-axis. Here's my point. Minus 5, 1. Into the house, down the stairs. Minus 1, there's my point there. Let's join that up. Use blue this time. Again, you should be using a ruler. I'm a professional, and that's much straighter than last time. So you notice, this line is vertical. The name of this line is x equals minus 5. Why would that be? Well, what's the x number here? Minus 5. 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 Are we spotting a pattern? I hope so. So x is always minus 5. So we call it x equals minus 5. So all vertical lines have an x in it with a number. And there is no y in this equation. And on this one, they all have a y number when they're horizontal with a number but no x variable. Okay, so understand this, stop the video, make sure you've copied all these notes first. Okay, now we're going to do a much more interesting question. So please concentrate and wish for another worked example. Abracadabra, here we are. So, I'm going to call this a backwards example. This time we need to determine the value of R. So this is proper pirate algebra. So the line passes through 6, 3 and R, 2, with a slope of minus 2 thirds. Now if you notice, I've listed the variables and I've written the formula again. So it's not a new idea. So x1, out comes Peter and Paul, e6, 3, Arr, the pirate variable, 2, and also this time they've given me slope. So that's the m value. When you have a list of variables, you have a formula, we bring it together. m is minus 2 thirds. y2 is 2. A minus sign is a minus sign. y1 is 3. x2 is R. Minus sign is a minus sign. And X1 is 6. Now the bit that's screaming out for me to do is which part? Can you see it? That's right. The 2 minus 3. It's going please subtract me and write down the answer minus 1. Now this is the tricky bit where you may find the algebra a little bit more difficult. So I'm going to rewrite this line and we're going to use something that we learned in rearranging algebra earlier on. I'm going to show you the longer method and then the shorter method. So what we would do is we would times both sides by the lowest common multiple, which in this case is 3 r minus 6. And we times this side also by 3 r minus 6. So what happens? These 3's are actually dividing each other and becoming 1. So all that's left on this left hand side is now the minus 2 parentheses r minus 6. On this side the r minus 6 divides itself. Anything divided by itself comes together and becomes 1. So all we're left with is minus 1 times 3. 
Now, this is just easy peasy algebra that you should find quite straightforward. Minus 2 times r, negative 2r. Minus 2 times minus 6, plus 12. Let's put the equal sign a bit higher. Minus 1 times 3, minus 3. What do we need to get rid of first? The plus 12, so we subtract it from the other side. Minus 2r. Then I have minus 15 is minus 2r. And I'm running out of space a little bit here. I could do with a bigger board. So get rid of the minus 2, we divide both sides by minus 2. So I'll come over here to finish it off for you. Is minus 15 over minus 2, which is just minus divided by minus, positive 15 over 2. And I love fractions, so you can leave your answer as a fraction. Now you could maybe step to this line a little bit quicker. This is what's actually going on. But a lot of people, if you look here, the r minus 6 was at the bottom and it's crossed the top up here. The 3, it was at the bottom on this side, is crossed over here. Some people call this cross multiplying and it's okay to do that. But if anybody asks why does it work, you have to explain how we times by an LCM, the lowest common multiple on both sides, and how they divided and became one to leave us with this situation. So often my students sing a lovely little song. R minus 6 is at the bottom, it crosses to the top. The 3 is at the bottom, it crosses to the top. And they sing, learning, math, three music. Wonderful. Copy this down and enjoy the rest of your day.